Hey guys, how are you going? Hope you're all doing very well. This evening I'm going to be doing another movie review, so hopefully you find this one interesting. This movie is a crime slash thriller from the United States, English language, released in the year 2019, directed by Todd Phillips, and this film is called Joker. So Joker is an origin story of the Batman nemesis, the Joker, and how he became the dark person that he is. And so Arthur Fleck is his name. He is a deeply troubled individual. He looks after his mother, she's elderly, and he has a very good heart. He has good intentions, but society just keeps knocking him back. So he he has a job as a clown, he makes people laugh, he stands outside businesses and gets people attention to go inside, and he's always been picked on, he's been bullied, he's a very vulnerable individual and he doesn't really see life the same way as the common person. So he has a, uh, a, a another job or a dream, an aspiration to be a stand-up comedian. So because he doesn't really understand the next person, he doesn't really have the same style of sense of humor, it just becomes very, very awkward. And that awkwardness starts to turn into frustration when he sees society as the problem. And so his uh, disintegration mentally, going from Arthur Fleck to the Joker, starts to become very chilling and at the same time quite emotional. So what happens from that point on is something you're going to have to find out for yourself because that's as far as I'm going with my synopsis. Now my thoughts on Joker. This is without a doubt the most surprising film I have seen in a very, very long time and it is the best film of 2019 for a few very good reasons. Now number one, Joaquin Phoenix's performance as Arthur Fleck. This is one of the best characterizations and character developments I've seen in a movie in so long is that Arthur Fleck is a very vulnerable individual. He's had a very, very troubled past and he is a guy that you can relate to. He has a lot of human qualities. He has a lot of lovable qualities. He cares for his mother. He does everything that he can in order to try and integrate into society. But this is showing you the monster of society and shaping monsters as a result of our behavior and our stigma to mental illness. And this is the best part of Joker. Now, this is the reason why I think Joker is so misunderstood is because the overall topic that the Joker is, is a misunderstood topic, mental illness. We're not, it's, it's not glorifying the violence, it's not encouraging violence, it's showing you what happens when a person's mental health goes unchecked. And this is the failure of the mental health system, not only in this film, but in uh, life in general, is that mental health systems, they do you know, let down a lot of people and, they, and these people as a result do horrible things. And this is what Joker d displays best is that when we see horrible things that someone's done that is mentally unwell, we want to say that this is a one-off occurrence, we push them away, it's not going to happen again, they're monsters, they're not like you and me. But as much as we want to deny it, they are like you and me. And this is the character development that I thought was so brilliant in Joker, is that it's showing you Arthur Fleck is that he's not just this mindless, psychotic uh, supervillain like Heath Ledger's Joker was. Heath Ledger's Joker was very good, and I really liked that performance, but I believe Joaquin Phoenix's Joker is even better, is because it does give you humanity, and that humanity is what makes the film so raw and tragic. And that beautiful melancholy uh, uh, feeling that the film has, has you in a lot of uh, you know, different conflicting emotions. Is that number one, you're being horrified by what this man is doing to other people, but at the same time the tragedy of the whole thing is that it could have been prevented if he had the help that he needed this could have been a completely different uh, outcome and this is as I said it's molding a monster it's molding a monster through ignorance it's molding a monster through basically not accepting people who are different and Joaquin Phoenix just does an unbelievable job at creating a man that, as I said, I could be really sympathetic for. You know, basically, a man that you just want to put your arm around and say it'll be okay, but at the same time, a man that is deeply unhinged and very, very chilling. So there were some scenes in this film that I thought the suspense was through the roof, and it was masterfully done. And so this is a very dark character study of a very damaged soul. It's not just an origin story. You know, you, you see origin stories, and you think to yourself, oh, it's going to be another one of those films. Is it? No. Joker is so much more because it just branches out to a wide range of issues that are very relevant in today's society so that makes it even more relatable and to say that this film glorifies violence or encourages violence is the problem that the film is trying to depict its stigma its ignorance it's basically saying okay we're not condoning the violence we're not saying you know sympathize with a psychotic lunatic we're sympathizing for someone who is very unwell and has been let down by society and the society's continuing uh, continuing sort of knocking down of this person has molded this monster so we're just 
as much to blame as you know this uh, unfortunate and vulnerable character committing these acts. So it's not a case of saying, yeah, that was good what you're doing, you know, horrible things. You're actually horrified by these horrible things because the violence is done in a way where it isn't gratuitous, it's very brutal, and it's very uh, few and far between. So you don't become desensitized to violence. And this is what I love in these shocking films is that if violence is used very sparingly, it has so much more emotional impact. And this movie has very high impact because of the fact it's, it comes out of nowhere. And I think that it's just a, the, the, this, the, the violence is the result of all of that inner sort of resentment and that inner torment that Arthur Fleck has. And so I just think the violence plays a very pivotal role. And once again, I just think that aspect of the film is greatly misunderstood and so the soundtrack was absolutely phenomenal the cinematography as I said there's a strange level of melancholic beauty to it you can actually marvel at here you know, some scenes that were very very uh, beautifully shot but as, at the same time you've got a soundtrack that is devastatingly haunting that really just brings it down and it just creates something that is a very dark underbelly and that dark underbelly is us contributing to the monster whether we want to accept this or not and in order for things to change in order to, for change you have to understand and I think that Arthur Fleck is a result of not understanding and these are the consequences that come about as a result. So you've also got fantastic performances from the supporting cast, you've got Robert De Niro who plays a talk show host that I thought was very interesting and you've got the runtime which is absolutely fantastic is that two hours it just goes for over two hours but i think it was an absolutely fantastic runtime because it gives you enough development and enough enough relatability to this man who is slowly progressing from a troubled person into a deeply psychotic person so i thought all of that was absolutely brilliant if i have one problem with the film is the movie that it, the world it's depicting in and now uh, this is a problem I had with Dark Knight, Heath Ledger's Dark Knight, in that it was, it's supposed to be a comic book sort of film, and Joker especially, more so than Dark Knight, doesn't feel like a movie that's set in Gotham City. It's, it's a movie that has a very different tone to the overall comic book world. And so I kept thinking to myself, this is a standalone film, but when I saw things like Gotham City in the background, I thought, okay, well, I'm kind of... It, the two worlds are kind of conflicting and they're not really going into each other very well. And so I just thought as a character study on mental illness set in a superhero world, that's kind of, it's not really treating mental illness for, uh, you know, it basically setting it in Batman's world. I thought it's not really, it's not going together very well, if you know what I mean. And so I just thought as though if you're a Batman fan or a Gotham City fan or a superhero fan in general, you'll think that the tone of Joker, it just doesn't quite belong in that in that world. And so I just thought that was something that was a slightly off-putting. But you know, as a film by itself, I just thought this is absolutely phenomenal. It is a fantastic character study of mental illness and the stigma and vulnerabilities that mental illness brings. I believe it's better than Heath Ledger's Joker because of the fact that Heath Ledger played a psychotic supervillain very, very well, but he had one tone. Basically, this super you know, monstrous man who didn't really have any humane qualities in him, whereas Joker, Joaquin Phoenix Joker, he has a lot of uh, human emotion. And I just think that was much better. It was much more realistic. But again, realism doesn't really go into the world of Gotham City very well. And that's the only thing that I have had a slight problem with. But pushing that aside, this is a phenomenal film. Go out there and see it. The best movie I've seen in a long time and best film of 2019. I'm going to give uh, Joker four and a half stars. All right, guys, that's it for my review. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching movies and I'll see you later. Bye.